Oh hey, I'm Nicole Foto, you're watching Soundly Awake. If you're new here, welcome, and if you've been here, thanks for coming back. Today I just wanted to give you a little six month update on my Spanish because somehow it's been six months already since August. TBH, we just moved. And so for the past like two or three-ish weeks, I've studied so much less than I have been in the past. Now that we're finally like pretty much settled into this new place, by the way, Welcome. I, I can actually get back into organizing my day around things that I want to do. If you're interested in like how we're decorating the new place or what it looks like in general, you can subscribe to my vlog channel, which is still soundly awake. I'm uploading a vlog every single week, usually like Friday nights or Saturdays, and you can see the progress of, of what's a goes on. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's been very hectic, but also like super excited to be in this new place. It is, I mean, better in so many ways. But yeah, if you want to like see the whole process, go on over to Still Soundly Awake, watch the vlogs. I think there are six currently. Yeah, there have been six weeks in 2021 already, somehow. And there's a vlog for each one of those weeks. But this is the first video I'm filming in this new apartment. And uh, I still, I don't know where my tripod is. <laughs> I think it might still be at our old apartment. So, you know, I should probably find that and get it and bring it and use it instead of putting my camera on top of a, a cutting board and then a plastic container and then a, a wire shelf. I mean, or I could keep doing that, you know, rustic. But yeah, it's been six months since I started really studying Spanish and trying to, you know, boost my level in the language. August feels like 10 years ago, but also feels like yesterday. So what is time? But I'm gonna update you on what the resources are that I'm currently using, how maybe my study process has changed, mistakes that I made, and a more realistic outlook, I guess, on like how long it truly takes to learn a language because I think. Oh my God. Do I have this piece of food in my teeth for the entire video? I need to speak to the manager. Sometimes I get a little bit overzealous and I think I can do way more than, than I actually can. <laughs> so, well, I mean, you know, the year is halfway through from when I started and uh, I am nowhere near <laughs> where I want to be. If you're also learning a language, please let me know in the comments, what language are you learning? How long have you been actively trying to learn it? And what the process has been like for you? Like, are you learning quicker than you anticipated? Are you learning slower than you anticipated? Let me know. I need to know that I'm not alone. So for the most part, a lot of the things that I've been using remain the same, like Spanish Dict. Spanish Dict. Dot com is my go-to dictionary, conjugation, connoisseur, grammar lessons. I reviewed like said and estar, which I thought I knew. And then I took that grammar course that's free on there. And I was like, oh, uh, I guess I didn't know everything there needed to be known about those things. I mean, not only does it like refresh any memories that have been collecting spider webs in the back of my brain, it helps cement those ideas in. And obviously there are things that I missed along the way. I haven't been reading as much as I wanted to because it became like strenuous. Like it felt like it took so much brain processing power to read or to try to read because like I said before, this even happens to me in English. Like I have only so many reading minutes within me a day, sometimes not even in some days. And so in Spanish, it kind of just, it made it <laughs> like it amplified that. And so, you know, I do eventually want to get to a level where I can comfortably read, but I think what I need to do now is just force myself to do it just not as much as I was hoping to in the past. Like if I read a page or two, I feel like that that's probably like a more realistic goal to have or plan to have. I've been trying to talk to myself a little bit more in Spanish when I'm like doing things. Before when I was looking for the tripod, I, I was like talking to myself in Spanish, trying to find it. And that's less embarrassing because there's no one there to make fun of you for saying things wrong. I mean, obviously it's good to have conversations with actual human beings because you could learn instead of saying the wrong things and not knowing you're saying the wrong things. However, I feel like talking to yourself is just a 
out the out the tongue. I feel like talking to yourself is just a good habit to have when you're learning another language, or at least it has been for me in Spanish. Because some sentences that you find yourself saying over and over again, the repetition is useful for, for memorizing them and having them, you know, readily available for when you're looking for them in an actual conversation. Your brain's like, oh, I've said that a hundred times. Okay, here it is. I also haven't been watching that much TV. I haven't even finished that show that I started, um, La Casa de las Flores, because there were other things that I started watching and then I just kind of, it, it became like a, a background thing, like something I'll get to. That's not helpful. I have been watching YouTube videos in Spanish and um, I hate myself for what I have been doing. Wait, wait for it. <sighs> we all know the YouTube algorithm is pretty good at suggesting things that it thinks you want to watch. And so when I watch a lot of language related content, it will suggest other language type videos. And so I've been watching a lot of videos about Portuguese and I am not even at a place where I should start trying to learn Portuguese because my Spanish is not at a level that I'm comfortable with yet. And so I've also been watching Peppa Pig in Chinese. I really, I have such a hard time focusing. I will decide to do something and it will be, I'll be super passionate about it. You know, I'll be hyper focused on it for a, a given time. And then once I become familiar enough with the types of topics that people talk about in one language for this example, Spanish. And then a, a video about Portuguese pops up and it just looks so new and exciting and inviting. And, and my shiny object receptors really just start just blowing up, you know what I mean? And I really need to stop doing that. Like if I'm gonna watch Portuguese videos, I better be making Portuguese a priority and I'm just not doing that right now. So I was watching um, Lindy Bodes. I hope I'm saying her name right. And she was talking about how once you reach a certain level in a language and she I think knows, oh gosh, I'm gonna get this wrong. Like me, more than five, more than five. Go watch her videos and you can learn more about her. She's, her videos are great. She was talking about how sometimes like you get stuck or bored learning a language and it makes you plateau. And so one of the remedies for that is finding new resources or new ways of learning that language because it, it kind of like injects the freshness that you need. Injects the freshness. Wow, what an appetizing phrase. I, I, I need to inject some freshness. So I need to find some new resources. Uh, I think I might start watching Peppa Pig in Spanish. I, I know I just looked ashamed, part of me is, but I shouldn't be because children's shows give you basic sentence structures that you can then use new vocabulary and insert them in those sentences to make new sentences. And so I feel like for my speaking to be more fluid, I need more basic sentences and phrases at my disposal so, you know, my brain can just serve them up. You know, we need we need a quicker turnaround time here, folks. So I, I think that's that's what I'm gonna start doing. I Like I said, I was watching Peppa Pig in Chinese and I started picking up on more words that I forgot from Chinese class a million years ago. And I was like, oh, Zemma Young, I remember that now. But anyway, this video is about Spanish, let me stop. Yeah, so we talked about reading, we talked about uh, watching TV. I've also, Ken got me another month at Baselang and the past few weeks, again, I just haven't taken any classes because la vida has been so frenético, frenética. See, I, my, virgin, my virgins, oh my God, I literally meant my genders. <laughs> I need a better hold on my virgins. Oh, also, if you see me like crouching like this, it's because if I sat up straight, um, you just, my forehead's missing. And I like my forehead enough for you to see it. I also plan on booking more classes, speaking to tutors for the rest of this month. Honestly, it's an expensive program and uh, I don't think a third month is really, it's not, it's not on the cards, at least not for right now with all this moving stuff, because moving is expensive. I don't know if we knew that, we knew that. But I'm gonna try to cram as many classes as I can uh, before March. What else, what else? Oh my God, I had a moment. So there's a, a lady who in my new 
laundry room, was doing laundry, and she was talking to her friend or her daughter or someone else in Spanish. And I really wanted to ask a question in Spanish, like start a little conversation in Spanish. And I chickened out. I told myself, you know, like if the opportunity arise, arose, I should throw caution to the wind and just do it and not be embarrassed. But in the moment, it was scary. Why? Why is it scary? And I've done it before. One time I was in Miami, this was years and years ago, and I was in a shop and a lady was in there. She only spoke Spanish, the shop person did not. And she was trying to tell the shop person, can I leave these clothes here? And then later my husband will come and pick them up. And they, they could not communicate. And so I stepped in and I was like, oh, I think she's saying that she needs to leave and then later her husband's gonna come and pay for it and, and pick up the clothes, the stuff that she wants. And it was like a super rewarding experience because. So while I'm editing this, I'm realizing that this specific story, I was speaking mostly in English because I was telling the shop worker what the lady was trying to say, but I mean, it was still rewarding. The lady was like, yes. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't realize I, I knew that much just by listening. Anyway, the moral of the story is it, it was a great time and I, I wish I didn't chicken out this past time. I'll give you an update if, if that happens again and then I, I actually do try to have a conversation. Pero a veces tengo demasiado miedo porque no, no quiero sentirme avergüenza y pienso que aún esta palabra tal vez fue equivocado y no quiero encontrarme en una situación donde yo um, parece tonto. No sé, porque es muy natural, es muy uh, común, obviamente, porque cuando estás aprendiendo un idioma, claro que sí, hay veces donde no sabes una palabra, dices una palabra equivocada o usas un verbo o sustantivo que no quieres usar, pero todo es parte del proceso. But yeah, it's all part of the process. And so it really is like a fear of embarrassment that holds us back from things. Sometimes I feel like a lot of us just want to be perfect at the beginning. At least I can speak for myself. I feel uncomfortable when I don't know how to do things perfectly from the start. Sin embargo, estas situaciones donde puedes grow. I do know how to say to grow and I just really, I can't think of it right now. See, this, this is the, my lack of practice for the past few weeks. But all in all, I mean, I, I do see progress. Tiene una madre, pero no es su madre, okay? Y ella es muy mala. That's it. I, um, I just wanted to give a little six month update and I hope that was helpful for anyone, you know, maybe thinking about starting a new language and what to expect because um, in the beginning, you know, I did watch a lot of language videos. You think you know, what you're getting into until you get into it and you're like, oh, this is a little bit different than I expected. Here's to the rest of the journey. I'm excited for, for the year update. I might do a nine month update, you know, I like, like a pregnancy, you know, see what my Spanish is like when once it's born after nine months. But we'll see, we'll, we'll see where we at, where we're at, where we're at. Also, if you guys have any suggestions, if you have like specific questions, leave them in the comments below and I will, you know, see if I can make a video out of the question. Oh shoot, my q and I will do a QA and a next. I said I was gonna do it and I, I forgot, you know, in the hustle and bustle. And uh, don't forget to check out Still Sound Only Week. <laughs> did I just go to the Midwest for a second? How did I get there? Anyway, go watch the vlogs on Still Soundly Awake if you're interested in moving and decorating type stuff, life 
stuff, dog stuff, Warden is in a lot of the vlogs a lot. And if you want to check out my Patreon, that is much appreciated. Patreon.com slash Soundly Awake. Thank you to everyone who's been over there and thank you to everyone who might decide to do so today. I'm Nicola Foti, you're watching Soundly Awake and I uh, will see you very soon, for real, this time with a new video uh, in my new apartment. Bye.